Then why not play games? Absolutely. Quite right, too. <laughs> but tell me, Hilary, which is your favourite piece? With hindsight, I might not personally have chosen any of them. Oh. But actually... <laughs> you can't do that, <laughs> That's charming, that is, isn't I'll it? I'll go with the jewellery box from the, for the brownies, yes. And, Andrew, which is your favourite piece? It's my opera glasses. The I'm, opera I'm glasses. very, very proud of them. Which piece is going to bring the biggest profit, in your prediction, as a chartered accountant? I sincerely hope the dog dish, as that's what the expert recommended. All right, I will. <laughs> We'll keep an no eye on your head though. on the no balance pressure. sheet there. <laughs> what about you, Andrew? I'm, I'm sticking with my uh, opera glasses. Opera glasses. I think they'll fine. be fantastic. Well, you spent an average £140, all right, and I'd like £160 of leftover lolly, please. Hey, Mum, check it out. OK, Andrew gives it to his mother, who probably counts it. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. £160 going across to Thank KB. Thank you very much. I think you've had quite a testing time with these professionals, yeah, I, I really haven't did. you? I know. I, I, Andrew, I sense, is a bit more of a gambler, but Hillary is very how should we say, more discerning, and she <laughs> insisted on something practical, so I, I have my instructions. Quite right, too. <laughs> and we trust you. We well, do, yeah. good luck with that. <laughs> Let's remind ourselves what the Reds are up against by reminding ourselves what the Blues bought. The Blues were barking mad about the Blue Dog Delft wine holder at £85. They still fancied a tipple and bought the 1880s stoneware liquor barrel. And Lydia thought it would look good in Marley's hair, the Tibetan snuff or perfume bottle. So, Lydia, all your knowledge certainly pulled off there, didn't it? Well, hopefully, yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, which is your favourite piece? Um, I like the Delft Dog. Uh, it was a wine container. What about you, Marley? I've got high hopes for the Tibetan snuff box. Personally. Have you? Yeah. Why? It's just really interesting looking, and I'm pretty sure that it's going to get a lot, and everyone seems to think it's not going to, but... So it's oh, your favourite, and is it your prediction for the most profit too, yeah. is it? Mm. Double whammy on that, yeah. which is great. <laughs> what about you, Lydia, for the most profit? The dog. The we're, dog. Quite, we're quite opposite. I think I've got very low hopes for this snuff box. <laughs> well, you don't like the snuff box? No. No. Oh, well, <laughs> we shall find out. What fun. You spend 170, which is good. I'd like 130 of leftover lolly. There we thank go. you very much for David Harper. Well, thank you, Tim. So that's quite a lot, isn't it? 130 yeah. for a bonus buy. I've got a few things in mind, but I think I'm going to keep the suspense. In other words, I haven't really got a clue <laughs> of what it's going to be this time. Well, that's extraordinarily mm. honest. Anyway, thank you. very, very, very good luck. For me, I'm heading off somewhere absolutely spectacular, and it's called. Hatfield House. We're leaving our modern venue and heading south to look at an historic collection. I've come about 20 miles from London to a house that's positioned with easy access for royal and political activities. And it's called Hatfield House. It's the Tudor monarchy that Hatfield is most associated with, in particular, Elizabeth I. She lived in the old palace, of which only a quarter remains. In 1607, the first Earl of Salisbury started to build Hatfield House, and it's remained in the family ever since. After 13 generations living at Hatfield House, there are really large collections still in situ. And what do you do if you've got a family collection of 10,000 books? You build a socking great library, which is exactly what the Cecils did here. All the usual suspects can be found on these shelves. Religious tracts, political speeches, poetry. But originally, this space was simply a reception room. But in the 18th century, they converted it into a library by installing all the lower ranks of shelves. But by the 1870s, they were crammed full, so they trotted off to France, bought these brilliant cast bronze balustrades to make up this balcony, and then they filled the upper part with shelves, which are now full of books. Do you want to have a look at the view from up here? Great, isn't it? And if you were enjoying your time in this library, the peace and quiet, or you might just snuggle down. Cool. And what could be more comfy than this? Why is this suite of leather-covered library furniture quite so fab to sit in? Well, it's been built in a proportion for men, primarily. You've got long seats and comfortable arms that keep your elbows up. Men, when they get to a certain age, tend to spread a little. Therefore, they need a more generous seat.
to plant themselves on. There is one question I have to ask you. Is your settee at home going to look quite as good as this settee after 220 years? I think probably not. Because most of this suite of furniture were made by a firm called Beckwith and France, cabinet makers and upholsterers late in the 18th century. And if you look at the frame, you can see that the reading here in oak is reflected in the reading on the legs and on these lovely brass Georgian casters centred by a rolled section of leather, so typical of that Georgian construction. Beckwith and France were extremely successful in their trade, but by and large, they were upholsterers as well as makers. And if you look at a leather pad like this, you can see quite how it came about. Because inside this pad, it's stuffed with horse hair, and then it's buttoned by inserting a button into a pocket with a cord between it, pulling it slightly taut, that gives it this lovely crinkled and overall comfort effect. All these pieces have been relatively recently reupholstered within the last 20 years and apparently it took no less than 189 skins from the imported Nigerian goats to cover the suite. Goat skin because it's more pliant and it takes on this gorgeous colour more easily. The big question is today, how sweet are things going to be for our teams over at the auction. Well, it's great to be at Bamford's auction house in Derby with James Lewis. Welcome. Very kind. Now, our teams today, Hilary and Andrew, their first item are the opera glasses. Yep. Slightly concerned about that bit of cord wrapped around the handle. What, just in this area here? Yeah. Yeah, they'd not have string on a luxury product like no. that in 1900, would they? So I, I reckon there's been a, a little section of mother of pearl that's been broken and they've applied that cord to make it tie in with the bag. But they're quite collectible, they these, are. these yeah. opera glasses, aren't they? What do you think it's worth in that state, then, with its rough bag and later strung handle? Yeah, I don't know. Around 40 to 60 pounds, do you think? Do you reckon? Yeah. 35 pounds they paid. Oh, that's good. Yep, that's not too fine. bad, is it? What about this jewellery box? Like that. I mm. like the leather ones with that sort of very slightly worn gilt. Yes. Um, so it's got a good look to it. Yeah, I like that. OK, how much? 25 to 35 pounds. They paid 30 pounds. Oh, looking, so, yeah. Yes. Good so far. Not too bad. <laughs> Good. And now the dog bowl. Yeah, I saw that coming. You saw that coming. <laughs> it's not a dog bowl. It's not a dog bowl? No, it's made in Denby, so only about 10 or 15 miles up the road. We sold this, you know, about eight weeks ago. And we thought about what could it be. Could it be a dog bowl? So we took it up to Denby, we mm -hmm. showed it to the curator of the museum, and it could be one of two things. It is the base of either a large smoking stand or a water filter. So it would have a domed base, then a cylindrical section here for tobacco, yeah. another section on top, for cigarettes, or the water filter would just be a cylindrical section on the top with a cover. So that would um, make this worth £75, would it? Sort of. These, oh, these smoker stands or water coolers make around £60 to £80 pounds complete, oh, so the base of one is worth a fiver. Oh, dear. Kate Bliss is going to be less than oh. blissful about this, I can tell you. Sorry, Kate. So you think about a fiver, then? I do. Well, that's a disaster. They're mm. definitely going to need their bonus buy, so let's go and have a look at it. Now, Andrew and Hillary, you spent £140? Mm -hmm. Gave Kate £160. We what did. did she spend it on? Well, I Ooh. spent it on a little piece of Derby. Now, I know you like functional things, Hilary. That's right. This is what's known as a little tea bowl and saucer. And it would have been for drinking tea in the 18th century. Is that why it doesn't have a <clears throat> handle? That's right. That's exactly how they were made after the Chinese design nice. in the 18th century. Have a little look. You have the tea bowl. So I they like kind of have the hold saucer. it like that. And That's right. Yeah. Exactly that. That's beautiful. It's, it's, aged, it's not aged too badly. I think this is a particularly nice example because of the condition, because of the decoration.